ahead and bought something um, pretty interesting, I think. It's a factory Subaru part, but it's for a different model car. But uh, I'll show you the reason why I got it in a second. But So, this is a intake manifold from a 2011 Subaru Impreza, as you can see. Now, let me get this out, and I can give you a, a good picture of it, and then I'll show you why I got it. Okay, so I uh, have it out. You can see it's the intake manifold, the TGVs, the fuel rails, and uh, yeah, the whole fuel rail system. It's got the Mishimoto coupler and a throttle body. So with all this stuff, the reason I bought it was for the fuel rail system only. Um, and then I'm probably going to do something with these TGVs. But um, if you look at this you see that those are top feed injectors right there. Let's see if I can pull it out real quick. So there's the injectors that came in this thing. And I didn't even buy this for the injectors. I just bought this for the fuel rails for these top feed injectors. So let me go show you my car real quick and see what we're doing, dealing with. If you look down there, those are my injectors for this car. But if you look at the intake manifold, it's all the same. Uh, you can't really see the TGVs all that well, but... Everything is the same. Looks like my dipstick popped out again. Um, so yeah, these are uh, what are called side feed injectors. Um, and that's a top feed injector. So you can see this is where the fuel comes out. And this is where the fuel comes goes in. These ones, the fuel goes in from the side. That's why it's called side feed injectors. And this one's top feed because the fuel comes in from the top. All right, so there's a couple reasons why you want top feed injectors over side feed injectors. Um, one thing being is selection. With top feed injectors, you have a lot more um, aftermarket support if you want to get a bigger injector. There's a lot more options out there for top feed. Also, um, I'm not quite sure the exact reason why, but um, the fuel spray pattern for top feed injectors is, I guess, more reliable than side feed injectors. Uh, it's a better spray pattern, uh, and you can make safer power, like higher power levels safer with top feed injectors than you can with side feed injectors. The, uh, the main reason I'm, I want top feed injectors is because um, I plan on running on E85, so I need a larger injector to pump more fuel in because E85 has like a third of the burn power, I think. So you need more fuel to go in, so you need a bigger injector to put the more fuel in versus if you're running 91. So if you didn't know, um, the motor that's in the 05 to 09 uh, Subaru Outback XTs and Legacy GTs is the same motor that's in the 2008 to 2014 Subaru Impreza WRXs. So um, a lot of the performance parts um, are available for WRXs because they're more popular to build than Legacy GTs and uh, Outbacks. So you kind of just got to know what fits and what doesn't. But uh, in 2007, they came out with... Um, the top feed fuel injection on the um, Legacy GTs and Outback XTs. My car's in 05, so I still had the factory side feed. But if I bought a two-year older car, it would have the, the top feeds. But uh, this came off of a Impreza. I would have bought a Legacy GT if they had it, but they just had an Impreza intake manifold. And this was this whole setup right here was $125 shipped. So it's a pretty good deal for all this stuff. Um, all I need is the the fuel rails and the TGVs right here. Uh, the rest of the stuff I will probably sell on the forums or eBay. So I'll probably make sure these injectors are good. Sell them on the forums. Uh, and I'll sell the intake manifold on the forums. And um, what else is there? Oh, the throttle body. I'll sell everything I can on the forums or eBay. And get my get some of my money back, hopefully.
So if you take a look right here, these are your TGVs. Um, it stands for turbulent something, I don't know. But uh, it's basically like a half butterfly valve. Now, um, the only time these are on or closed is when the car is, you know, the first 30 seconds of startup. So it's pretty much like a choke. So it closes this, less air gets in, car chokes. And then once the cars run for 30 seconds or warmed up, it opens them up like so. Now, um, if you look in there, you can see that, you know, it's still kind of open, but there's, uh, you know, that butterfly valve still in the way to uh, impede flow. Let me hold it up to the light. So if you look through it, it's still not straight through. So what a lot of people do is you can buy um, TGV deletes, and it's just like a, a billet aluminum part that has this part removed uh, so that it's straight through. Um, now, since I had to upgrade to top feed fuel rails anyways, I got the top feed fuel rails, and these are the top feed um, TGVs that are different from the side feed ones. So uh, in buying these, I think I'm going to try to do the TGV delete myself, which a lot of people also do. Uh, it doesn't seem to be too hard, so I'll probably start working on that soon. So if you were to try to do a top feed conversion on these cars, um, I think it's like somewhere within like the thousand dollar range, but uh, you'd have to buy TGV deletes that are side feed to top feed conversion. You would need top feed to side feed fuel rails, and you need to get custom like braided lines to, you know, connect to everything. But uh, I kind of want the car to be somewhat stock looking. Now I have, if you've noticed, I've bought a bunch of black parts. I haven't bought all my dress up parts yet, but all the parts you're able to see from the outside are black. And um, I didn't really want some shiny, you know, fuel rails up here that you can see. So uh, it being that this is a stock component, it's not flashy. I'll clean it up and make it look good, but it's not going to be like pop. You know, the, this thing's aftermarket because, you know, if I get pulled over in California and they see a lot of stuff, it's not going to be a good time. So I'm trying to keep the outside looking somewhat stock for the most part, not have like red and blue everywhere. Okay, you guys, so on the table, I got the stuff I'm going to be using, minus the injectors. Uh, and then over here, I just put all the uh, other stuff that I'm not using. So I did some quick um, math, I guess. Um, so I wrote out, you know, the cost of the parts and stuff you need to buy to do a new top feed conversion and then this OEM top feed conversion. Um, the TGV deletes are $270. Fuel rails are $200, the fuel lines to go to the fuel rails $250, the injectors are $520, the fuel pump is $70, a uh, total of $1,310. Now, um, for this stuff, I just did my calculations, uh, including $125 for the price of the uh, fuel lines and the TGVs coming out. So, TGVs, I just put free uh, fuel rails, uh, $125. Fuel lines, $80, and that's being generous because uh, chances are I'm probably just going to buy the dampers, which are like $5 each, so I need two of them. So chances are the fuel lines are only going to cost me $10, but, you know, I might do a little bit more. So, uh, But this is how much you uh, used fuel lines with the dampers in them cost is around $80. So um, I put $80 being generous. Injectors, same $520 because I'm getting the same injectors. Same fuel pump, $70. To a total of seven hundred ninety-five dollars, and this isn't accounting for money I make back selling all this stuff. So if you want to be generous, uh, just if I keep that price and I keep all the parts, I don't make any money from selling anything. Uh, you save five hundred fifteen dollars going the OEM route, and then if I sell everything, it's six hundred and forty dollars in savings. So it's quite a bit. Uh, you'll have less bling, but um, it's going to work the same as this will, and with this too. Chances are you're going to have to buy a new fuel pressure regulator because the fuel pressure regulator that's on the uh, fuel lines is a little bit more temperamental running higher flow than these ones that are in the lines are. So now that all this stuff is off, I'm going to go ahead and clean off all this stuff and make it uh, you know, look better. I might take some sort of wire wheel depending on how this cleans up or scotch bright or something to make it you know, not so gross. Uh, same thing with this. This one's probably going to get a wire wheel. But... Um, yeah, I'll just figure out what I'm going to do to clean these up. 
And then I'll probably also clean this stuff up too, just so it's, you know, easier to sell clean stuff. Then I'll be back for another video to do um, TGV deletes. I'll show you guys how to do this. Um, it's pretty easy from what I can tell, but it'll be my first time doing it, and I'll bring you guys along to see. So stay tuned for that TGV delete video. So stay tuned for the TGV delete video. Uh, I also have some more parts coming in tomorrow from Subaru, uh, which will kind of finish up my short block for the most part. So I'll be doing like a final weigh-in of that stuff. Uh, and you know put it in my spreadsheet so that I know the total rotating assembly weight And then I'm going to take it in to get uh, balanced and stuff and then Get a few more parts and then we'll be ready to assemble a short block. So all moving along pretty good um, You know we hit a little bit of a, I think a slow spot where I had to save up some money yeah, Keep tuning in uh, for the engine building videos the TGV deletes uh, kind of past the the boring stuff on the engine build everything from like this point on is gonna be machining and uh, assembly so that should be pretty entertaining not like you know ring gap was pretty boring so stay tuned for those next videos coming up uh as always thanks for watching uh if you aren't subscribed please consider subscribing if you like the video hit the like and i will see you on the next one